While in recent years, there's been a rise in women's wrestling in WWE, with the likes of Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Bayley, and Charlotte Flair helping to turn it into a legitimate main event force, within company canon, there's still one woman who stands tall above the rest as the absolute GOAT. Yes, as someone who largely carried the division during its darkest days, Trish Stratus was able to break through all the negativity initially placed against her for being yet another fitness model, becoming one of the best female performers of her era by the end of her run. So, how did it all happen? Well, join us today as we take a deep dive into her entire career journey in Stratus Faction, The Trish Stratus Story. Patricia Ann Strategis was born on December 18, 1975 in Toronto, Ontario, Canada to parents John and Alice, and it was there she would attend Bayview Secondary School with her two sisters, Christy and Melissa, finding an early love in pro wrestling at this point with some of her favorite superstars including Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage. But despite this love of the ring, her initial sports endeavors would see her get involved in soccer and field hockey instead both of which she regularly played while studying biology and kinesiology at York University. That said, any plans she had of getting a job in these fields were stalled when a faculty strike took place in 1997, forcing Patricia to rethink her career path. So it was lucky then that, soon after this, she would be approached by the publisher of Muscle Mag International magazine about doing a photo shoot for them something which the Toronto girl quickly accepted and which went so successfully that she would be signed to a two-year contract with the magazine as a regular model soon thereafter. And while she was doing this, she would also start dipping her toe back into the wrestling world when, in the summer of 1998, she got a job as a host on Live Audio Wrestling, the same show that noted industry journalists like John Pollock and Wei Ting got their own start on. Come the turn of the century, however, her days with the LAW would come to an end after she was headhunted by WWE, with the idea here initially being that she would act as a heel valet rather than an in-ring performer. And that was what led to her debut on the March 19, 2000 episode of Sunday Night Heat, where, now going by Trish Stratus, the Canadian would start scouting tests in Prince Albert, something which led to them acquiring her services as a manager soon thereafter, and the group became known as TNA. But while the idea hadn't been for Trish to get in the ring here, just act as the hot mean girl who could rile up the crowd, she quickly showed her desire to be more than just a piece of eye candy as, while the group was feuding with the Dudley boys, she would begin taunting Bubba Ray to the point that he'd actually powerbomb her through a table at April 30th's Backlash. And after that, it was off to the races as the former fitness model started to get more and more physically involved every week, with her eventually making her formal in-ring debut at the June 22nd episode of SmackDown when TNA took on the Hardy Boys and Lita in a six-person tag team match. Soon after this, and both Trish and Lita would start a singles feud of their own, with Lita, who was already by this point one of the better women's wrestlers in North America, teaching her opponent a lot about how to work a match during this time as the two formed a close bond, quickly becoming real-life best friends. But despite the friendship behind the scenes, on screen they would remain heated rivals, with the first phase of their feud ending up climaxing on the July 24th episode of Raw in a strap match, a match which the heel ended up winning after a little help from then-women's champion Stephanie McMahon. So now proving to the world that she could go in the ring and was more than just a mere valet, Trish split away from Test and Albert towards the end of the year as, heading into 2001, she got her most high-profile role yet when she started acting as the on-screen mistress to Vince McMahon, something which saw the two get involved in a lot of raunchy on-screen segments, much to the chagrin of Stephanie. And of course, this eventually led to both women taking it to the ring at February 25th's No Way Out where, despite the limitations of each competitor at the time, they were able to put on a pretty underrated match that saw the billion dollar princess come out on top by the end. After that, McMahon's relationship with the Toronto girl began to falter after he'd forced her to demean herself on national TV to win his affections back. Yes, in one of the more controversial moments of the Attitude Era, the boss would make Trish strip down in the ring and bark like a dog in a scene that many countries refused to air on television. But the heat wasn't on Trish herself over this. No, most people realized she was just playing her on-screen role and that it was the company itself who got the bad press that came out of the incident. Perhaps that was why, in an attempt to backtrack then, WWE would have Stratus get some modicum of revenge at April 1st's WrestleMania 17 where, during the match between Vince and his son Shane, she would slap the boss across his face and contribute towards him losing the bout from there. 
After this, now a fully blown babyface, she would begin wrestling more and more, teaming up with her old rival Lita as the two then welcomed Stacey Keebler and Tori Wilson into WWE during that summer's much maligned invasion angle. Of course, with the limited skills of Keebler and Wilson, however, this wasn't the best program to allow Trish to progress further in the ring like she wanted, with things instead usually being resolved in bikini contests or bra and panties matches, as was the norm at the time. So she must have been quietly pleased then when an ankle injury suffered not long after this took her away from the feud, with her returning in the autumn to challenge for the WWE Women's Championship at Survivor Series. And on that night, the Canadian would finally achieve her ambition when she won the title, starting her first reign on top of the mountain from there as she entered into a feud with Jazz. Yes, it was vindication for her against anyone who thought she could never be more than eye candy, but it wouldn't be easy going forward as Jazz proved to be a formidable opponent, taking the new champ to the limit at January 20th, 2002's Royal Rumble, and then outright defeating her for the belt two weeks later on Raw. Luckily though, Trish would get a chance to avenge this loss at WrestleMania 18 on March 17th where, in front of her hometown of Toronto, she would face off against Jazz and Lita in a triple threat match. That said, despite having the home field advantage, Stratus would not be able to regain the belt on that night, and so instead, she would briefly move over to the hardcore division when, on May 6th, she would pin Crash Holly to win the title, only to then lose it to Stevie Richards soon afterwards. Still, it did mark another minor feather in her cap as she'd become one of the rare women to win that particular belt, and this helped to motivate her to become women's champion again as, one week later, she would team up with Bubba Ray Dudley to take on Richards and Jazz in a match where both the hardcore and women's straps were on the line. And on this night, finally, Trish was able to get the victory she'd been looking for, pinning the champ to start her second reign on top. After that, as a result of the brand extension, she would become exclusive to Raw, defending her title there against all comers. This would once again come to an end at June 23rd's King of the Ring though, as it was then that she would be pinned by Mighty Molly, with the two continuing on their feud for the next few months after this, with the Toronto girl acting as the challenger. And eventually, after a few failed attempts, Trish would finally be able to get the better of Holly when, at September 22nd's Unforgiven, she would pin her to become the three-time women's champion. But her next challenger would prove to be far more formidable as it turned out because that would be when Victoria made her debut with WWE and immediately set about trying to dethrone the division's top star, even going as far as to challenge her to a hardcore match at November 17th's Survivor Series where the two women reached levels of violence previously unseen in the division. After that, and they would break even more new ground when on the December 19th episode of Raw, the champ teamed with the Dudley Boys and the challenger teamed with Christian and Chris Jericho to take part in the company's first ever intergender tables match, with Trish picking up the win here after she was able to powerbomb Victoria through a table. But while the feud with Victoria would continue on after this, Trish would find some relief in the fact that, on screen, she began developing a relationship with Jeff Hardy, with the two often competing as a team together and showing their affections for each other in backstage segments. This would ultimately end up getting dropped, however, when Hardy was released from the company in April of 2003, right around the point where the Canadian was finally putting her rivalry with Victoria to bed during a triple threat match that also included Jazz at WrestleMania 19. And while she would win that night, the next month at Backlash, she would end up losing her belt to Jazz once more. So moving away from the title scene for the time being then, the former fitness model would start feuding with Gal Kim and Molly Holly, something which saw Trish have to look towards an old friend to for backup. Yes, this was when she and Lita would be put back together on screen as, teaming up from there, they were able to defeat Holly and Kim at September 21st's Unforgiven. But that wasn't the only major story she was going through at this time, as she would also enter into a budding on-screen relationship with fellow Canadian Chris Jericho too in November, as Y2J began wooing her, hoping to win her affections. Pretty quickly though, it became clear that the whole thing had come about after a bet had been made between Jericho and his partner Christian so as to see who could conquer either her or Lita first. And so, feeling betrayed by this, Trish would turn her back on her on-screen lover, not realizing then that he'd developed genuine feelings for her and wanted to make things right. And this would carry over into 2004 as, after turning babyface, Y2J would be able to regain the trust of Stratus. 
That, however, would upset Christian, who began a feud with his now former partner soon afterwards, one which led to a singles match at WrestleMania 20 where, to the shock of many watching, Trish would reveal that she had been stringing Jericho along and that as revenge for his mistreatment of her, she was aligning herself with Christian going forward, turning heel for the first time in three years in the process. In the end though, all this did was get her more over as, now having proven she could more than carry herself in the ring, Trish was once again able to let her fantastic heel mic skills shine, as over the next few months, she, Christian, and their new heavy Tyson Tomko would make Jericho's life a living hell. And as if things couldn't get any better for her, she would win her fifth women's title soon after this when she beat Victoria, Gal Kim, and Lita in a fatal four-way match at June 13th's Bad Blood. And this time, she wasn't going to give up the belt easily, as even a broken hand couldn't stop her from defending it, with her going through every challenger that was thrown at her for the rest of the year right up until December 6th when, in a history-making moment, she and Lita would be the first two women to ever main event an episode of Raw, battling it out in a match that saw Lita come out the winner by the end. Unfortunately for the new champ, however, she would drop the belt back to Stratus the following month at New Year's Revolution. And despite the initial plan being for her to win it back at WrestleMania 21, a knee injury picked up during that match would see the company have to change plans as they instead came up with a new challenger for the Canadian. That was how, in the lead up to the big show in the spring of 2005, Christy Hemme would present herself as the number one contender, with the storyline being that the champ had become jealous of the additional exposure Hemme had received after appearing in Playboy magazine. And all this ultimately led to the two going one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania on April 3rd, where Stratus would successfully retain, with her spending the following weeks gloating about this to her career-long rival Lita, as she'd been the one who'd kayfabe trained the rookie for the big title match. After that, Trish's next notable opponent would happen in May, when after suffering a herniated disc, she would be put on the injured shelf for the next four months. Rather than strip her of the title during this time though, WWE allowed her to keep the belt, with this leaving the company without a women's champion for a while as she took time off to recover. And when she did return, she'd make up for this by turning face once more and starting one of her most famous feuds, that being against Mickey James. Yes, Mickey had been introduced to WWE fans around this time as a super fan of Trish, and though this started off innocently enough, with her supporting the champion throughout her feud with Melina that summer, at a certain point, James began displaying more stalkerish tendencies as her admiration turned into full-blown unrequited love, with her going as far as to force a kiss upon Stratus on the December 26th episode of Raw. And while this was originally only supposed to act as a bit of titillation for the male fans, both women were able to turn it into something so much more as, with 2006 rolling around, they managed to create one of the best women's storylines the company had ever seen by that point. One which saw its next major beat take place at New Year's Revolution where, after finally meeting one-on-one -on -one in the ring, the champ was able to retain her title. Despite that though, Mickey would continue to harass Trish, eventually turning full-blown heel on her when she attacked her at March 18th Saturday night's main event, with all this resulting in the blow-off match being booked for April 2nd's WrestleMania 22. And that match, which ended up being one of the best women's matches in WWE history at that point, would eventually see Mickey finally able to defeat the object of her affections, ending Trish's historic reign at 448 days. But. The tough times wouldn't end there for the now former champ, as at the rematch at the following month's Backlash pay-per-view, she would dislocate her shoulder, with this putting her out of action for the next month and a half. And when she finally did return from this injury on June 26th, she would lose to Mickey a third time, something which caused her to then move away from the title picture once more as she began an on-screen relationship with Carlito after he'd saved her from an attack at the hands of Molina and Johnny Nitro. This then would lead to a mixed tag match at July 15th, Saturday night's main event between all four parties, with the babyfaces winning this one come the end as, from there, they would go on to feud with Lita and Edge for a while. And while this run appeared to be yet another successful one for the Canadian, what fans didn't realize was that, behind the scenes, she was just about ready to hang up her boots, with her feeling like she'd achieved everything she could in the ring now. So with that in mind, her last Raw match would come on September 11, 2006, when she was finally able to defeat Mickey James one-on-one. -on -one. After that, Trish would go into September 17th's Unforgiven with one last goal, to beat her career rival and real-life best friend Lita one more time. 
Lita, for her part, however, would be unwilling to lie down so easily, and even claimed in the lead-up that she would send Stratus packing in defeat, publicly acknowledging her intention to retire following the bout then. Only one person could win, and with the women's title on the line, all was at stake as the two squared off for the final time at the pay-per-view a few weeks later. On that night, though, despite the heel putting on her best effort, she would be unable to get the better of the Toronto girl who, in front of her hometown, after 11 minutes and 34 seconds, tapped the champion out with a sharpshooter to win the belt for the seventh time. Following this, Trish would vacate the title and formally enter retirement, using her newfound free time to get married to her longtime boyfriend Ron Fasico later that month. And to make matters even sweeter, several of her former partners and rivals would be there with her on her special day, with Lita even acting as her maid of honor. And despite settling into the next chapter of her life then, the newlywed would still make the occasional cameo return to the ring. First at the Raw 15th anniversary show on December 10, 2007 where she attacked Jillian Hall. After that, she would even hit the ring again on the December 22, 2008 episode of Raw, where she would team up with John Cena to take on Santino Morella and Beth Phoenix in a winning effort. But these appearances would always remain short and sweet as, outside of the ring, Trish had by now opened up her own yoga studio in Toronto named Stratosphere that was taking up much of her time. And as well as this, she would also get involved in a travel show of the same name at this point, which saw her embark upon various trips in search of exotic locations and daring physical challenges every week. So maybe it was all this success outside of the wrestling bubble then that opened her up to the idea of making a more lengthy return in 2011, as it was here that the Canadian would be announced as a trainer for the reboot of WWE's Tough Enough series. And in a promotional tie-in for that, she would even get to have one more WrestleMania program that spring when she teamed up with John Morrison and reality TV star Snooki to defeat Dolph Ziggler and Lay Cool at the Showcase of the Immortals on April 3rd. Yes, it was a successful return, and part of the reason why, just two years after this, the WWE legend would be officially entered into the Hall of Fame by none other than Stephanie McMahon. The following year, Trish would then induct her best friend Lita in the hall, proving the strength of the two's relationship even after all those years. On top of all that, around the same time as this was happening, Trish and her husband Ron would welcome their son into the world, with their daughter following four years later in 2017. So now, a mother of two, you would be forgiven for thinking that the seven-time women's champion was done with wrestling for good. How wrong you would have been then as, after the women's revolution began to blossom in 2018, Stratus would see a chance to lock up with a new level of performer that she hadn't always been able to back in her day. That was what saw her make a return at the inaugural Women's Royal Rumble that January, coming in at number 30 and lasting all the way to the final five before being eliminated by Sasha Banks. After that, and she'd team up with Lita one more time at the all-women's pay-per-view Evolution on August 18th of the same year, defeating the team of Mickie James and Alicia Fox after her original opponent Alexa Bliss had to pull out due to injury. But she still wasn't done yet because following this, the legend would have one more match, a dream match this time, when she took on Charlotte Flair at August 2019 SummerSlam, proving there that she still had what it took to keep up with the best of them after having one of the matches of the night. Will she ever lace up her boots again following this? There's always the chance, of course, but the fact is she really doesn't need to anymore. No, her legacy is already secure as arguably the greatest women's performer in WWE history. After all, along with Lita, she was able to break down barriers at every turn, paving the way for what would come in the future. And if you need any evidence of this, just look at the long, long list of female wrestlers who cite her as their biggest influence. Names like Sasha Banks, Alexa Bliss, Mandy Rose, and Carmella, because Trish was able to deliver stratisfaction for the entire WWE fanbase every time she hit the ring. Well guys, what did you think of the video? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, as well as follow WrestleWithAndy on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.